Hey guys! Dun dun dun! Welcome to the Dr. G Show. It's tonight. It's the seven o'clock news hour with Dr. Garrett and Holly Hajaj. Yes. So tonight it's Dr. G and the freak boss. Okay. Bossy or boss? Hello. <laughs> and the bossy. And the bossy. <clears throat> Assertive. Right. Uh. So. Last week, uh, I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. There's on, and um, you know, people either are going to um, have a awesome Thanksgiving or they're going to have a traumatic Thanksgiving. Uh, but I had a great Thanksgiving. I had three Thanksgivings that were great, and uh, she's watching her phone. I don't know how to share this, just to share it, like a normal you sharing person. Just share it. I try, but then it gives me all these people to share it to. Can I just share it to everyone in my... Public. I don't know. She's supposed to be the tech guru oh, here. Oh, look how you got the words in front of my face again. I know. That's nice. I was going to switch it, but... Nice. So, uh, to the last week... <clears throat> okay, so we had... Uh, we had good recipes and all that kind of stuff about Thanksgiving. Uh, did any of you guys try that? Everybody's making forget jokes. So today's show... I forgot. I forgot, too. Today's show yeah, is uh, why we forget Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, and uh, brain fog, and so we'll talk all we'll talk about kind of what that means. And when I think, I think I'm probably gonna get killed after this show by those people that keep killing all the holistic doctors because I think I figured this all out. All right, so stay tuned. And you guys gotta like witness, uh, keep track of me in case uh, something happens to me. We'll also talk about this book uh, called Dean Salermizin. <laughs> oh, it's backwards. End of Alzheimer's. So, uh, it's by Dr. Bredenson. So, a uh, patient brought me this book to, to look and see what I thought about it. And it's based off of this research that was published about a multidisciplinary approach to treating Alzheimer's that was pretty effective. So we'll talk about that in depth too. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was trying, trying, still trying to get a handle on the tech the technology. What the hell are you doing over here? <laughs> Deb says she made the worst pie of her entire life. Was it gluten free? <laughs> <laughs> was it the recipe I gave you? Because that's not my fault. Uh, I got that from uh, Dr. Padilla, and uh, so. Ooh, I'm gonna tell her you said that. I'm just. Mm -hmm. Suzanne's out there. She always says howdy because she's from <laughs> Oklahoma. All right. Okay, so, so I'll. So what's your name? Are you Holly? <laughs> so my name is Holly Hajaj, Hajaj and Hajaj. I've been on the show like a long time ago. I was on the show. It's yeah. been like a good couple of years. Right. She says he barred she, me from being on the show. She does not watch the show unless she's on the show. <laughs> she said that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking That's about. That's a bunch of bull crap right there. I've got people to help and things to do. I watch this show like three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why we forget. Um, and you have some pretty good stats and you... Uh, well, is uh, there... I wanted to ask, is there anyone out there who's dealing with um, Alzheimer's in your own life? Or is there somebody that you're <clears throat> caregiving for or that you know is needing care um, just want to be able to relate with you guys in a real way and um, kind of help help touch on some things. Do you have questions, those people who who are struggling with this? or um, It's come up in my own life uh, in a way. My mom had a stroke a couple of years ago, and uh, since then she has developed some <clears throat> dementia-type symptoms. And um, so that's it's a painful um, struggle sometimes and a lot of people don't know what to do and um, not only are we here to try to help provide support for you know what you could do in the moment in terms of troubleshooting but um, then also more than anything we would like to help you prevent um, this happening in your own life or just for others so yeah yeah so you know we'll joke a lot mostly her but uh, I take this stuff very <laughs> seriously but uh, again, it's all in good fun as far as like, you know, it's, it's, it's very stressful. You have to have kind of laughing about this. When I, uh, I gotta say my first experience with Alzheimer's 
was uh, when I did home health through college, um, there was a patient, we'll call him Mr. Johnson, um, and he all the time was, like, this is my first experience with Alzheimer's ever. And so uh, I would be in his kitchen and his wife would be cooking breakfast and uh, Mr. Johnson, he would look at me in the face and look angry and he would just be like, just scowling. And I was like, well, what's going on? And he's like, you have some nerve breaking into our house and making my wife fix you breakfast. And I was just like, what do you think? What do you think's going on here, dude? And uh, like, seriously, like <laughs> that's his thought process with this. And then one time we were doing Legos for dexterity stuff and he was just like, uh, we're in his living room and he looked over at me very seriously and he's like, so what kind of grade do you think we're going to get on this? And I was like, where do you think we are? And so he's like sixth grade or something like that and you, he explained it. But I was like, there's a widescreen TV in your living room and they're like furniture. How do you think this is a classroom? Like it was a very interesting uh, perspective. And then the best time was uh, I was uh, sitting with him uh, while he was going to sleep and he started calling his daughter's name and I said, oh, she's not here. And so then he started calling his, uh, his wife's name and I said, well, she's not here either. And he goes, well, who's here? And I said, well, I'm here for you, Mr. Johnson. And then he goes, help, help, <laughs> help. <laughs> so, he was right. He, he was right to say that. So um, then I took all the stuff and left. Yeah. But so, that's crazy. Yeah. So um, what? we've got quite a few people here who can relate. All right. So um, I, I don't have, know how to say it on, A-W-N. On Boktai Warrior. When he's asking about people who, she, she or he is on. I can't see the picture. She. That's a um, he. <laughs> I'm sorry. Most of my patients, um, Deb, dementia but not Alzheimer's. Um, we've got Gina saying memory is a horrible thing to lose and it's very frustrating. True. Um, and then Linda said that she's, she's become forgetful in recent years and that worries her. I struggle with that too, you know, just oh. even just brain fog or, or just not being able to remember names and things like that. I, I also had a head injury a few years ago, but, um, but sometimes it feels like it's not just that. Um, it feels just kind of like this slow, slow process of deterioration sometimes that um, does make you worry. Um, so we're here to talk a little bit about, about what it is and, um, what we can do. Do yeah. you want to talk about what, what it is and, and the difference, you know, you hear dementia, you hear Alzheimer's, yeah. well, they, sometimes people use them synonymously. Tell us more. Yeah. So, you know, Alzheimer's is not, uh, all dementia. So you have different types of dementia and Alzheimer's one of those it's a neurological kind but you have vascular dementia you have glycemic dementia like type 3 diabetes you have metabolic so if you decrease like V1 you can't process memories uh, so that's like Wernicke's encephalopathy with a uh, quarter cough syndrome <laughs> you know what I'm talking about so you know that's what alcoholics would have or pernicious anemia patients uh, they, they would need. and then you have like uh, even like vas or not vascular metabolic ones where they have like uh, say um, uh, anemia and you know you can make a blastic anemia and you're not carrying enough oxygen so your brain's getting less so what did you say dementia is sort of a just a overall a general term for cognitive decline right that's right and alzheimer's fits that's right within that umbrella of dementia yeah it's kind of okay. like uh if you don't know this but all colds are cold colds like a hundred hundreds of different viruses and flu is one of those viruses. So, with uh, um, so sometimes people are like flu is different than a cold, but flu is the cold. Did you know that? Mm, I didn't know that. So it's the only one that'll kill you, right? So nobody's gonna die in a right night. It's a severe form of a cold. Right. Whereas Alzheimer's could be a severe form of dementia. That's right. Yeah. So with that, um, you know, who the hell is Alzheimer's? Right. Everything's named after some doctor. And this doctor is a, uh, oh, what is it? A lo Aloysius? <laughs> Not sure how to say the first name. You're, you worked at Barnes and Nobles. Aloysius? That sounds like a stage Alois? name. Alois? That's what it looks like. It's delicious. Aloysius? I don't know. So it's, yeah, it sounds made up. It's A-L-O-Y-S-I-U-S. -S. So his parents did not love him. Um, or her. It's a him. Oh, it is a him. Okay. It's a doctor. Oh! Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Did 
you guys just hear no, that? No, this is from the 1900s. Did you hear? They mm. banned women in the 1900s. Not okay. like today where we have more females in medical school than, than guys. Okay. So. <laughs> so the first Go patient on. was uh, Augustus D. <laughs> oh, Lucius and Augustus D. Aloysius? I don't know. What's Let it? me look at it again. You worked at Barnes & Noble. Aloysius. Could no, be. It's yeah, Augustus. Could be. No, it's a, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could be. I think that's like rap names. But, uh, so it's been a hundred years since she died. Actually, I think it's been a hundred years since uh, Alzheimer's died. Dr. <laughs> Alzheimer. Okay. But, uh, this is kind of funny, in a way. We gotta be able to poke fun at serious stuff. So, this patient... And believe me, he's the master at that. Augusta D. D. Right? Uh, this was the patient that, that started all, and it started with unprovoked paranoia that her husband was sleeping with her neighbor. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it was paranoia when he, he gave his oh, report to the sure, doctor. Sure. So because of her paranoia of him banging the neighbor... Uh, she was admitted to the Municipal Asylum of Lunatics and Epileptics in Frankfurt. I think the dementia started with some woman. He got her committed got, because he was cheating on her. I think that's really <laughs> what happened. Wow. I think we just. Um, we're probably going to get murdered for this. <laughs> Mainly her. I'm just here. Al I'm along for the ride. I'm just purporting what she told me. <laughs> But isn't that crazy? Okay, so two two funny things, right? Uh, I suspect my husband is cheating. Well, that's unprovoked, unprovoked paranoia, woman. You probably have Alzheimer's disease. Let's put you in a lunatic asylum, right? Did you know that? Go ahead. And did you know uh, she was admitted to the municipal asylum, but just barely, because there was a bunch of protesters throwing tear gas at her trying to get into the asylum. No, that's the southern border. Okay. Uh, oh, the, oh, that other funny thing is it's the Municipal Asylum for Lunatics and Epileptics. They lumped lunatics and epileptics. Like, you have seizures and crazy people. <laughs> so they probably didn't know quite as much back then. <laughs> they just lumped them together. About oh. where sh people should be housed. Well, you got a little tick? <laughs> well, you're going to the lunatic house. <laughs> so then... Uh, yeah. So then, when they when uh, that woman died, Augusta D, um, she uh, they took her brain and cut it up, and they found amyloid placking, neurofibular tangles, and it's called frontal lobe dementia. And so then they figured out that uh, this was a thing, right? They hadn't seen this before, so it's a thing. And so of course, Doctor Demen, no Doctor uh, Dementia, no Doctor Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, um, he. They named it after him because of this patient, right? They also found, uh, now they didn't know this before, but the hyperphosphorylated TAU, which is encoded by the MATP, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, uh, that gene uh, regulates this, but that's what forms those plaques. And what's interesting is uh, part of the process of statins, so statins can cause Alzheimer's, if you guys don't know that. Statins... Do not prevent heart attacks. Mm. Statins are cholesterol, cholesterol lowering right. medication. So to block cholesterol production, you also block CoQ10, which will lead to dementia. But then you also block the TAU pathway, which is what then will cause placking of the brain to mimic Alzheimer's <laughs> disease from taking statins. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're causing it. But what's even better is I figured this out. Well, actually, she figured it out, and I'm just purporting it. So if somebody dies mysteriously, I think you all know him well enough. You know they're killing all those holistic to know doctors, the truth. right? Do you know that? But I think they all know who this information is coming from. I'm just the speaker. <laughs> so, get this. You, I'll post this, but the University of Calgary School of Medicine in 1997, maybe they actually show this video. Uh, where they did the first research where they could reproduce Alzheimer's in developing brain tissue by uh, adding the amount of mercury you would absorb from your dental amalgam fillings from your teeth, right? So in this video, uh, they showed this nerve and it's growing, right? You can, you can literally watch this nerve grow, which was amazing. 
and then they add the amount of mercury that you would get from your dental filling and then it just instantly dies right you saw it mm -hmm. you don't I'm, All right. I'm listening so then it dies and what happens is the mercury binds to the little tubulin, which actually kind of like little Legos builds this little tube, and the neuro, the nerves are inside. Uh, so like it's basically a tube with wires inside. But the mercury binds to the beta subunits of the tubulin, and then they collapse. And so you end up with this plaque of this tubulin. And then the neurofibular tangles, or the, the neurofibers, uh, they start falling apart and so they end up causing a tangle which is the definition of Alzheimer's so they could literally take the type of mercury that you'd absorb from your dental fillings and put that in there and reproduce Alzheimer's to the T right so what's really interesting about that too is uh, by the way uh, most flu shots have just the same amount of mercury you would get from your dental fillings so you inject yourself with the mercury. Uh, why do they Why do they use mercury? I'm, oh, because it's a great cheap preservative. It's cheap. Okay. Yeah, it's profitable. And it's a preservative. Yeah, so it preserves it. Okay, so we've got we've talked about statins being. Well, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I was just. I'm a conspiracy. Up. Oh, oh, a conspiracy. Okay, uh, so whoops. dental okay, fillings. Right. So if you look at a chart of disease, like this. So how many people have this disease and then uh, or, uh, over time and how many people have it? It goes like every other disease we said. Very few to no people have it and then boom, everybody has this disease, right? For Alzheimer's. For Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's explodes since the 1900s and then especially in the 1990s, right? 1990s it went clunk clunk, bam, like yeah. this, right? Yeah. So if we think it's dental fillings, when did they create mercury dental fillings? In the 1800s. In the 1800s mm -hmm. by Dr. Bell. That's why I never trust people with last name of Bell, right? Like Bell Bottom, <laughs> right? Dr. Bell Bottom who discovered the Bell Bottom genes. <gasps> wow. Yeah. So in 19, no, 1819, uh, we took a little trip. Is that that song? 1819, we took a little trip. I have no idea what Down you're talking Mississippi, about. Down Mississippi. Let's get to the okay. Point. I think that's a that's the Revolutionary War. 1918, 1819. It's gotta be 1819. So in 1819 in England, uh, they Dr. Bell discovers this. By 1830, it was widely used, and then by 1840, the American Society of Dental Surgeons denounced its use because of all the mercury poisoning, Mad Hatter, right? So, guess what? We didn't start importing sugar until the early 1800s. And then we started to have more dental fillings and we used mercury. So, so then we started seeing that all, connecting the dots there. So we start seeing Alzheimer's, which is reproduced by this new thing that we created that we respond to from all the sugar that we eat. So by the 1910s in America, that's where we see Alzheimer's starting to really uh, take off. And that's when we were eating about 10 pounds of sugar a year and getting astronomically more dental fillings with this mercury. And then the reason 19... How excited you are. I know. So, <laughs> I think we're on to some real shit here. So, so, what you're saying is that we're getting essentially a double dose of Alzheimer's risk. What caused it? Well, not only are we eating shit tons of sugar. Yeah. We're literally. then causing cavities and getting mercury fillings right. as the cherry on top. That's right. And the reason it spiked in 1990 mm -hmm. is because tech stocks were blown up in the 1990s. This is in that book, uh, Eating History. And then, uh, so these hedge fund managers looked at other stocks that were doing well but could do better, and they looked at food industry, and they said, you guys figure out how to make more money. So just in, like in the book, The End of Wolverine by Dr. Kessler, they talk about how they started adding sugar because sugar is more addicting than crack cocaine, which is why I don't eat sugar anymore, but I started crack cocaine. <laughs> there's our drug reference. Mm. <laughs> it was time. It was never shown until there's a drug reference. Mm -hmm. So then, by the 1990s, uh, we start seeing astronomically more cavities, and we see more dental fillings with more mercury, and then we see the dementia skyrocketing, and that...
is the reason is for the, the season. That's that's what's going on. So uh, it is kind of interesting. Um, so we're seeing, we see, we've talked about. Wait, do you believe this or not? Do you believe it? Well, I'm always, I. I feel like we, you don't believe it. You're just like. <laughs> we looked at a lot of research and came to some of our own. Solid conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> There was no um, beer involved in this situation. <laughs> this is legit. Um, but there are correlations, so it, it's not to say that there aren't correlations. Are there. you diminishing this? No, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna, I want us to talk a little bit more too about some of the other things that cause c- can cause dementia and mm. Alzheimer's. We've talked about statins. We've talked about statins. mercury. We've started to just mercury. touch on sugar. Sugar. Now sugar. Uh, is a really big one because uh, Americans, we, we in 1940, before 1940, we could not create type 2 diabetes, which is sugar diabetes. But we're Americans. We're not going to just let that stand in our way. So we started consuming 150 pounds of added sugar to our diet in 50 different names. And then we created a sugar storage disease called type 2 diabetes. And back in the 1950s, it was called adult onset. You had to be greater than 35 years of age to even eat so much sugar that you'd end up with no place to store sugar in your cells. So then we called it type one non-insulin dependent adult onset diabetes. But we're Americans, so we can, we're not gonna leave that alone. So then we ended up with type two insulin dependent diabetes from eating so much more sugar. And then we got children to eat so much sugar that we could cause non-insulin dependent type two diabetes in children for the first time mm-hmm. in history. America, we did it. And then we said, come on, we can get them insulin dependent, can we? We're Americans. So then, yeah, Linda knows, America. So then we ended up with a new diagnosis, which was type 2 juvenile onset insulin dependent diabetes. So we've got type 1, we've got type 2. Yeah. We've got now. 2010. What's next, folks? I bet some of you you can answer what the next one is called. Is it treacle? treacle? Treacle, treacle. What's the third series? The trifecta. That's not a real thing. Trifecta is to a word. The treacle, the sequel? then. No, the, the, the third sequel okay. would be the treacle. All right. I think that's a real word. <laughs> Can anybody validate this that? This is first? why I was not hired at Barnes & Noble's. This is why we don't play Scrabble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Actually, I do love Scrabble. In 2010, but. see Deb knows, we created type 3 diabetes, which is Alzheimer-ism. It's dementia caused by eating ass loads of sugar and then taking medication to force more sugar into cells that don't want the damn sugar and then not burning off that sugar. And then uh, we end up with dementia. So with uh, your brain, you need thiamine, which is B1, to convert glucose uh, into memories, right? So that function happens that way. So uh, if you have B1 deficiency, like uh, Wernicke's encephalopathy with cortical syndrome, uh, then you can end up with that from alcoholism. But we can also cause it from little fatty liver disease from non-alcoholic state of hepatitis or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And we can do that as young as five years old in children now and cause that fatty liver. But then if we do this to the brain, the brain functions off sugar, so if we make the sugar uh, uh, in, uh, uh, insensitive to sugar absorption, then you end up with dementia. Did you know that um, glucose does not need insulin to enter the brain? What? Oh, because of uh, thiamine does that. Yeah, you should know the mechanism. I'm just telling you what, I, what I've read. It's the GLUT4 <laughs> gene. So we've got, um, through the sugar consumption, we've got high levels of insulin. Straight up. Right? We've got um, AGEs, advanced yeah. vacation end products. Mm. How do you know this? We've though? got high glucose concentration. Yeah. Um, so when you talk about the end, end product one, because that's a big one for dementia, just like diabetics, they lose their fingers and their toes, which then, you know, you can get smaller socks, which is kind of nice. Um, and you don't have to have all those fingers in the glove so you my dad that's how my dad died you we know, were right? all hoping for the answer what's the answer right away. no you're supposed to tell us no what why does advanced glycation in products cause dementia 
you know? Well, I know that I don't know the so physiology it, so of it, but I know basically vessels. it kind of crystallizes the blood vessels. Yeah. So it damages those blood vessels, which then decrease the flow to that part of the brain. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also pr uh, probably a precursor for stroke and things like that as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Americans, um, we love our strokes. So some of the other things that I found in terms of risk, uh, risky said, factors. <laughs> High heat cooking also causes AGEs. Did you know that? Because of trans fats. So, um, and then red meat. What do you think about that because of too much iron? Well, humans are red meat, so I'm kind of against eating humans. Although if you bite your fingernails, technically you're cannibal. Go with that. <laughs> so red meat, as long as uh, the meat eats anti-inflammatory, uh, so wild caught, free range, grass fed, grass finished, then it's good. So like cannibals, they would be like, don't eat the Americans because they eat too much uh, inflammatory makes six dirty, fats, dirty red meat, and then they'll cause heart attacks. So, like cannibals, <laughs> we probably wouldn't go to blue zones and eat those people, and they would live longer. So, uh, it's not red meat, but it's the inflammatory nature of what that meat eats that becomes the greater concern. Right, right. Also, refined carbs. Did you know that if you are over seventy and you eat a mm. lot of refined carbs, we've talked about sugars, which fall under the carbs umbrella also but um, if you're eating a lot of refined carbohydrates that's processed carbohydrates the foods that are not in their original form um, you are four times more likely to develop Alzheimer's Booyah. over the age of 70. So what is that? What are some examples like brown rice and black rice? So a refined carb might be, you guys tell me, what's <gasps> which one is the Ooh, refined carb? You just make them at, answer the questions if you don't know. That's I'm engaging. Trying you, I'm trying to put you on the spot. That's and engaging. And I know you already know these things. All right. All right. So you guys. So you guys, you guys have to do the dirty work. And we've, work. Done, we do, we've done this before with our, some of our quiz questions. But which is the refined carb? Uncle yeah. Ben's. Whoa. Five minute instant rice. Okay. I or see. wild <clears throat> rice. Long cooking. Mm. Which one is the refined carb? I'm waiting. <laughs> 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 Uncle Ben's five minute instant rice mm. or whole grain. Thank you. <laughs> we got the <laughs> So the instant. Mindy to the rescue here. What about uh, micro? Thank you. What about microwavable oatmeal instant versus uh, still cut? Oops. Still cut. We've got some more Uncle Ben's. Good, good. Sorry, I didn't mean to to uh, is there a delay? shoot There's probably down delay. Uncle Ben's. There probably is. I hate Uncle um, Ben. Other things, other things would be refined carbs are going to be soda. easy things. Chips, soda, crackers. Whoa, that's racist. Soda, <laughs> okay. <laughs> soda. Um, what else? You guys tell so us. Are what are the refined carbs? Are you anti-cracker? I'm anti-refined <clears throat> carbohydrates. So like white crackers? You need to stop. <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the idea. Refined carbohydrates, your favorite snacky things that you can overeat very easily, um, easy go, easy cheap go tos. Yeah. Um, those are the things that are killing our brains. Yeah. It's not that you can't ever have those things. It's just you can't. <laughs> no. Wonder Bread. Ooh, that's like that's like the king. Of Wonder refined Bread carbs. is the white trash of bread. <laughs> like Wonder Bread would be like kissing its cousin. It's like gutter bread. <laughs> <laughs> gutter bread. I used to take Wonder Bread when I was a kid because uh, we were white trash. And I'd take the whole thing and I'd squish it to a ball. Dude, we've had this conversation I before. I've done the exact same thing. No, you thing. didn't. Yes, I did. I'd squish it to I'd a ball. Except I'd peel off all the crust because I yeah. wanted it to be all white. <laughs> <laughs> eat it like an apple. Yes. <laughs> I watch Saturday morning cartoons eating my ball of loaf ball of, bread. of bread. You did that too? Yes. 
Yeah, and we then every day after long school, side of the tracks. <laughs> every day after school, it was a microwave cheese sandwich with rubber with with Wonder Bread. Yes. Yeah, with American <laughs> processed cheese. Did you eat mayo sandwiches? Ew, no. Oh, That's where we differ. You weren't ghetto like this me. This is then. why I'm Have better you than ever you. eaten the ketchup sandwich? Oh no. All right, you were on the other side of the tracks. Then. <laughs> I was on the crappy side of the tracks. I lived in the tracks. <laughs> Under the tracks. So those are some of our causes of um, cognitive decline, nutritional yeah. or ingestible causes. Would you say that stress, I don't know because I haven't read this, but mm. I'm going to ask you in terms of infl- inflammation. Strep, yeah. Would Strep? <laughs> <laughs> would you say that stress? Strep throat? Stop it. <laughs> stress. <laughs> yes, yeah, stre- actually stress. Cortisol, when cortisol increases, so we're the number one country for anxiety and depression, America, um, when cortisol increases, it actually suppresses your ability to convert short-term memory into long-term memory because it's the brain's way of trying to forget. um, And sleep. If you don't get sleep, that's the same thing. That's right. Because it has to cycle through the memories and all that, too. So So excessive... Unrelenting stress. Oh, Deb knows what I'm talking about. Butter and sugar white bread. <laughs> that was the stuff. I used to make cinnamon toast with just butter and sugar and cinnamon on the toast. I decided I'm going, well, that's upscale. <laughs> just bu- just butter and sugar on <laughs> untoasted bread. But butter and sugar and cinnamon? Yeah, and spices to it. <laughs> that's gourmet. <laughs> That's double wide talk. <laughs> double wide talk. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. My mom would uh, talk about, can I get some cinnamon on that? She'd be like, don't act like we live in a double wide. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so those are some of the risks. Do you guys have questions at this point? Um <laughs> So we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do to prevent this, but um, just a f- you know before before we move on, just a few more of the stats. Oh um, yeah, you have some really good stats here. Um, it is now the sixth leading cause of death in the U.S. Sixth, which I thought was pretty shocking. And it went from zero, <clears throat> and then yeah, yeah, and actually accounts for four other deaths. On their heart disease, cancer, uh, kidney disease, corresponding infections. You, okay. Because diabetes. Okay. Well, I'm no, no, I'm sorry. I'm talking about diabetes. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I forgot what we we're talking about. Uh, all right, Doc. Um, so check this out. This is from the Alzheimer's Association. Deaths from heart disease decreased by 11 percent. Deaths from Alzheimer's. Increased by one hundred and twenty-three percent. Holy shit! That's crazy. It is crazy. And I, I don't know. We were looking at this chart and looking at the night how there was just this huge spike in the nineteen nineties, and yeah. all I could think of was big gulps. Yeah. And supersizing. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um. So, like yeah, that's what, that's when that came out. Right. Like that's when yeah. everything had to be made as big as possible all serving sizes and things like that yeah um so the drinks got bigger so did the people you yeah, know it's and interesting then the people correspondingly got bigger the people used to be skinny the tvs were fat mm-hmm. then the tvs got skinny but the people got fat so either way we were the same distance from the tv <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't move um, and also one other really shocking statistic, um, and like I said, this is kind of close to home for me, but, uh, but for some of you as well out there, one in three seniors, one in three seniors dies with Alzheimer's or dementia. That is crazy because it wasn't like that when I was growing up. Right. Not at all. So. So <clears throat> it's serious, but what's cool and what I really love about what Dr. G does. Kenneth Polito's on here. He was my French professor. Uh-huh. Oui, je parle français. <laughs> right? So he is like the most dapper guy ever. Like he was super. Je parle français un peu. 
Oh, uh, uh, but no, we're not going there. Aussi. Uh, aussi. <laughs> Let's alienate our entire English-speaking uh, audience. Chantez le Marseillaise pour que les gens de Lille. So that's your go-to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not like we're trying to synthesize a methylated alkali. Uh, <laughs> All right. Somebody's got to tell him to stop. Ju right. Not just me. Okay. Um, anyway. So this is this is serious, this is real, but what's really cool and what I like about what Dr. G does and, and what I like about my own passion for health and wellness um, is just knowing that there is something that we can do. That knowing that, the, that we're causing this somehow, um, to me, I think is extremely hopeful yeah. and it gives us something to work with. So we're not stopping investigating. Um, we're not just gonna give up and say, just because it runs in my family, um, this means I'm destined to have it. <clears throat> like, what, you know, I mean, people preemptively cut off their breasts. We're not going to, like, preemptively kill ourselves because, just because. We? <laughs> We're Americans. We'll cause it, then we'll <laughs> overcome it. So, um, so anyway, what's next? All right, so this is a pretty interesting little chart, and I can post this for you guys, too. Um, <laughs> although the weird thing is, is it's backwards. So these are the things that increase your risk of, trauma, uh, of uh, cognitive decline, so in all types of dementia. And so uh, traumatic brain injury, that's a huge one because you're damaging that part. Uh, but there's also stroke, post-stroke, that kind of stuff. Midlife I, obesity, which is basically America. I am curious about how traumatic brain injury works. Whoa. Sorry. Mild traumatic brain injury is actually more debilitating for people because they, uh, it radically changes their life. But yet you don't see the over pathology like a major trauma. We'll do one on that, yeah. T uh, T TBI? TBI. Okay. TBI. If you guys have show requests, please, please let us know what those are. Yeah. So midlife obesity. So we said 50% of Americans are overweight, 70% are obese. No, 70% are overweight, 50% obese. Well, that's not right. It's, we have more obese Americans, obese, obese, <laughs> I'm from the South, more obese. than overweight for the first time in history. Um, and what's funny is, I always say this is funny, but by the time someone's overweight, they have lost 4% of their brain. By the time they're obese, they've lost 80%. Why? So the things that make them overweight so uh, are, are neurodegenerative foods. So things like nachos and deep fried bur uh, oh. deep fried Twinkies and why do you gotta say nachos first? Basically anything that you get at the state fair actually shrinks your brain. Now the other thing too is those studies from 2010 says that like, yellow food coloring can decrease brain growth by three thousand percent, blue by five thousand percent, and green by eight thousand percent, MSG by eight thousand percent. It literally shrinks our brain. So not only is our, our rate of dementia going up, but since 1960, our IQ has plummeted. Um, so we are now one of the dumbest countries in the world. Damn it. Because we... But at least we're smarter than Slovene. No, we're dumber than them. Okay, so we are just barely dumber than Sl Slavic. Slavics. Is that like Slee Stacks from the Land of the Lost? I was educated in Texas, so... Basically 19th, and I grew, so the country's 19th, Texas was 45th, so... <laughs> so, not how so. credible <clears throat> is this show? So I may not know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so, uh, uh, midlife obesity, because obesity actually degenerates the brain, and it actually, uh, the, the MRI scans of a obese person's brain is the same as somebody that's a crackhead, which is the same as someone who's alcoholic. So we need to stop eating fake food. That's right. Food with like Ugg boots and a Starbucks cup. Basic. Oh man, you can't bring in the pumpkin spice. That's. We're gonna lose some viewers. That's the worst. Midlife hypertension, which is dehydration mm. and inflammatory diet. Currently smoking. Uh, they don't say whether crack or cigarettes, but. Um, that, uh, sorry, you're going really fast for me. I, that's uh, the name of my <laughs> book. So Midlife hypertension. Midlife hypertension. High blood pressure. Word. Water. De dehydration. Dehydration. Inflammatory foods. 
So then, and inflammatory foods. Right, so inflammatory meat like corn-fed beef, corn-fed chicken, corn-fed fish. Okay. Currently smoking. Good old smoking, man. It beats it. It beats it all. That's right. That's why you snort crack. You don't smoke. He crack. doesn't think people smoke anymore, but Nobody I know that smokes. they do. Diabetes. <laughs> According to that one dude. From Betus. It's spelled T U S. Betus. So diabetes, which is sugar. History of depression. So depression because it's chronic stress, right? So depression can be marriage or kids or marriage with kids or or it could be kids a chronic and marriage. A, a chronic. <laughs> you're saying that a lot. You're, I'm just you're kind of hovering just right around that subject. Because people be knowing, they know. But those are mommy exter- brain. She said mommy brain earlier. She <laughs> those, knows. Those are external, external issues That's like right. with Cortisol. depression, but also there could be that um, physiologic depression coming from within based on all the stuff we're talking about right. what's going on in the body inflammatory processes that cause that are causing well, depression as and, well and the dementia will cause it too like just the, the fear of dementia is stressful enough to actually kind of make <laughs> exacerbate the anxiety sleep disturbances and you said both those like right off the bat you're just like sleep and stress so but look at this the things that improve it or decrease your risk is years of formal education because it's brain stimulation Keep learning. And actually, if you learn a foreign language, now I know as Americans we're really scared about people that speak different languages, but if you learn a different language, um, you will actually regenerate your brain to the age of a 25 year old, according to research. Because it's hard, it's hard once you get older, right? So that, like, I have to learn, you know, Espanol, right? But you gotta do with a country accent, like, yo quiero taco bell. Then it's funny, and then it's easy to learn. So, more education. That's why <laughs> I'm not going to be I'm such a nerd. All right. Physical activity. I'm surprised you didn't get excited about that. Oh. I am going to get excited about that. That should be the first thing. <clears throat> yes. Because you can't learn if your brain is not primed to learn. Straight up. And the reason physical activity works, there's a 4,000 good things about physical activity, but... You are increasing that blood flow and this. You actually build new vascular structure right. through exercise. Uh, you build new, um, yes. new, new neuronal mm-hmm. structures. You regenerate mm-hmm. nerves. You grow new nerves. Mm-hmm. So but you can, I just think it gets ignored so much. To be like, yeah, 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 physical activity, yes. whatever. I've heard that. But it, it really is like a magic pill. <clears throat> and, and really purposeful movement is better than physical uh, than exercise in the beginning because again people get so weak from not doing anything they can't open a jar in their 30s <laughs> right so women are creating to, so they said well, that basically now women with stored sperm they don't need men to reproduce anymore right so we're obsolete but we put the sperm in a jar really tight they still need us oh uh, okay survival so yeah physical activity has been proven to to help neuro, um cognitive decline in um seniors as well i feel like I went off track with that yeah, yeah but that's did. exercise so <laughs> okay exercise physical activity get your blood pumping and literally if you have a diminished blood vessel it will cause uh, a vegr uh which is a vasal endothelial growth factor yeah and, and that'll grow new blood vessels around that and increase blood flow to those areas. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It doesn't take that long to do it. For, so, for I know someone here mentioned someone else having a traumatic brain injury. That's also really, really great to know in terms of just recovery from um, injury in general or any sort of cognitive issue. Um, we're always building those new connections, and exercise will help do that e- even better. And cognitive training. Did you already talk about the Mediterranean diet? Oh, I skipped that. Mediterranean diet, which is like eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, berry, legumes, and greens, and low glycemic food, lots of fish, and getting exercise. Mediterranean diet is just real, actual food that's low glycemic, nutrient dense. So, a couple of people have mentioned on here a couple of questions. I want to catch that while we're talking about nice. diet. Healthy fats. How do good fats, um, increasing good fats, help? Um, one of the questions was how do you feel about increasing good fats, etc. Mm-hmm. 
So, we believe that fat makes us fat, but that's not true. Countries that eat the most fat are the skinniest, like Japan. But we want to eat anti-inflammatory, high omega-3 fatty acids. And So the type of fat is important. Right, the type's the important thing. So that's where, like, fish oils, everybody taking fish oils. Well, just eat your damn fish, and you don't have to take fish oils, right? People eat coconut oil. Like, scoop a cup of, you know, they'll talk about that. But just eat, you'll cook with it, use it, put it in, make salad dressing out of the coconut oil. Uh, but olive oil is anti-inflammatory too, you know? So you wanna use anti-inflammatory oils to cook in to as salad dressings, and that all is decreasing the inflammation in the cardiovascular system and the nerves to decrease the likelihood that you'll have uh, dementia. Yeah, and portion size on that, Late, I just did a training recently, they're saying, you know, about a thumb size portion, I don't know what your portion You'd, recommendation did is. Did you do that thing about the different parts of the hand? Yeah, the that's through Precision Nutrition. Yeah, so just say that. So, oh, with serving sizes? Yeah. Okay, I got to remember them now. So, um, basically, through Precision Nutrition, which you can find online as well, they use your hands to decide on, um, to help you figure out your portions. That's so if <clears throat> So, if you're thinking about how much protein should you eat, you want to use the palm of, the size of the palm of your hand. That is your protein portion. Um, That's if, bigger my head. Yeah. If you are um, thinking about carbs, one handful, uh, one of your handfuls is a carbohydrate portion for one meal. Um, and then for vegetables, we're looking at a fist is one serving. I, and when I say por portion or serving, um, and then for fats in any given meal, you want to use about the size of your thumb. Yeah. So, and we could go further into that as to, Men typically might have two servings of things per meal, depending on how big or how um, necessary, um, how much they need. And then women typically one of those servings each per meal. Yeah. So, so then cognitive training, which mm -hmm. is like learning a new language, doing puzzles. And this is really important as far as when it comes to dimension stuff too, is, um, if you only have one way by which you do things, you only have one game you play, there's one way to get to work, there's only one way to process stuff, if you lose that nerve, you're super screwed, right? So if somebody has one way that they go to work and then they're going and that brain, there's a glitch in that nerve that where you turn off, they just keep going and they're like, I'll figure it out soon enough. And the next thing you know, they end up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? And then they're playing, you know, trying to make out with their sister and playing the fiddle. So, lots of, <laughs> lots of variety. That goes for exercise too. You want lots of variety. And with exercise as well in terms of brain training, that also is a brain trainer as well. I know, I'm I, know I keep bringing it back to physical activity, but um, yeah. She's, she's corporate director <laughs> of like YMCA wellness. Everything's exercise. We're like, no, everything, your exercise, babe. everything is not exercise, but it's super important. It is. Um, but still, that cognitive training, so you want a lot of variety. Um, and the other thing, too, I was thinking about, like, when I, I think about my mom, and um, she, in terms of people that you're caregiving for, or that you're taking care of, or that are struggling with this, it might be important to have that one-on-one -on -one time with them to help help motivate them to do those things with someone um, instead of just on their own because they may not they may not naturally be motivated to do a lot of these things yeah so um, also wanted to say too if you need resources um, for just help with any sort of um, psychological approaches um, with a loved one who is struggling with this um, the Alzheimer's Association is an amazing amazing um, organization like yeah like, i just i just fell in love money? with them like they <laughs> no but they have so many support groups it's all free they can give you help point you to resources oh. um there's uh psychological approaches and then there's other people who have been through it so are they down the street yeah they're on yeah. um yeah they're on they're douglas the so that's yeah. here in wichita if you guys are here in wichita with us yeah sorry go on sorry not sorry um, Deb says rock steady boxing is amazing for Parkinson's. That is right. Exercise what also the hell is amazing that? for rock Parkinson's. Steady boxing? There's been some studies on just how. Around? 
What is that? Exercise in general can help reduce Parkinson's symptoms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then moderate alcohol consumption, and again, we talk about red wine. Resveratrol changes blood vessels, which increases blood flow to the brain. So not beer, not... Um, Brandy. Well, let's not get crazy here. Uh, and then uh, social engagements are huge. The average old person, and let's see, I'm 45, so that'd be anybody over 47. Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe retired person. Only sees one person a day at most. One. They have no social network. You have to have social time. The average American only has one true actual friend and uh, that they can be transparent to. So basically when you start isolating, stress goes up and then basically you, your brain rusts out. It's just kind of like, what's the point? So it starts pruning off dendrites uh, because you're not doing anything, you're not talking to anybody, not, not stealing Yeah, if you anything. don't use it, you lose it, literally. Yeah. So you have to get out. So. In most countries, the old people live with the young people. Or actually, the young people probably live with the old people. Uh, and so, basically, they're helping do everything. So, they're constantly, you know, functioning. They have constant purpose. But in America, we say, this is my house, Grandma. You get your own damn house, and I don't want you to be messing with my stuff. <laughs> right? So, uh, we need to make sure to kind of, like, engage with them. Uh, but also having them make sure that they have their little clubs and their little things and their projects and their hobbies and their crafts and support those things so so that's I why have I, an interesting story maybe you remember this story. the nun study that's, that's did a, you hear about the nun study that's not sound accurate what is that so they all these nuns signed up to do this study um, where at the time of death they would have their brains um, cut open and mm. looked at right okay and what they have these very strong social networks within, right, within the church. The nunnery. Um, the nunnery, is that what they call it? <laughs> I think that's real. Okay. So, um, monastery? No. That's for dudes. Anyway, they have very strong social works, networks, um, active, supported, um, things like that. And what this is what's interesting. What they found was they had, at the time of the autopsies, they had the plaques, right, that... Mm -hmm. that indicated Alzheimer's but they didn't have the symptoms oh yeah 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 because you can rewire around just like the vascular part that neural stimulator the cognitive changes you can literally increase neuro connections around to uh, create new formations so that's where people that like have 12 different ways to get to the grocery store this guy who has two thumbs and 12 different ways to get to the grocery store BAM if I lose one of those nerves, psh, I got 11 other ways to get there. Yeah. Ken, uh, says, Ken yeah. the nun study is fascinating. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. even though they had the indicators, yeah, they, they didn't, they didn't actually have it, which is, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so I did want to say, mm -hmm. oh, cool. We should kind of look at some of our comments here. Deb says she finally got her mom to go to senior center events, and the improvement is very noticeable. That's good. Yeah, mental stimulation. Um, yeah, awesome. I did want to go off topic for a second. We don't go off topic with this situation ever. <laughs> okay. Because Linda is suggesting that we have a show about flatulence and belching. The good, the bad, and the evils of expressing ourselves. We have actually done this show. Yeah, what do we call it? The shitty side of poop? <laughs> poop problems? I, poop and farts? I don't remember. It's good. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Not the vast me. majority of all your bowel gas gets absorbed in your bloodstream from your bowel, and you breathe it out through your lungs. Most of you guys, every time you're talking and kissing, they're farting through their mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. I like to tell people, uh, please don't do that around me. I don't want to smell your poop particles. Right. Because if you, to smell something, it has to physiologically That's, in your nose. Those are particles. So if somebody farts and you smell it, particles from their <laughs> butt are physically inside your face now. So I think that's a good, we could do that topic. That would be pretty good. We could good. bring it back. Yeah. We'll bring it back. I'm sorry to, to interrupt that. Do you guys have any last questions? We've got about four minutes. No, we're going to go over. I got, 
So I have this book. I told you it's called Dinin Dinin <laughs> Dine Surimulizie. Hmm. Oh, into Alzheimer's. So it's the first program to prevent and reverse Alzheimer's decline. And so this guy basically did this little study, um, and uh, and that's where he published it right here. So it is reversal of cognitive decline, a novel therapeutic program. And what they did was a multidisciplinary approach, uh, which is basically, I think he stole what I do as a practice. So basically, he is uh, one of the first studies published where they did emphasize sleep, exercise, stress, healthy carbs, healthy blood sugars, brain stimulation, gut health, and anti-inflammatory nutrient uh, um, um, rich uh, diet. Mm -hmm. Well, that's some bullshit because that's what the Dr. G protocol is. This dude's scamming his way to, to, to fame, riding on coattails of doctors <laughs> like me. I don't even think he because practices. Because you were the origin of all natural medicine? I am the origin of the origin, of the oracle. <laughs> I'm the oracle of the origin. So, that's the simplicity. That's what I love, okay? This guy did groundbreaking research to say, hey, you know the stuff that they do in like every other country besides the U.S.? It seems to work. In the blue zone country. Let's just do that stuff, right? So, he says eight hours of sleep. So we want to close with this. And then all you guys that watch offline, post your questions. Um, I promise that I probably won't answer questions, but I try. And before I try. we end, I've got one last, um, before we end, I've got one last statistic. So Did you know say the, your stuff. Oh, the worst stop. thing about telling Alzheimer's jokes oh. is you have to tell them more than once. That's um, Jimmy, Jimmy Carr. I'm right. really sorry. So. Sleep was basically eight hours, but that's not true. It's whatever you are effective with. So six to nine hours of sleep, depending on how you feel during the daytime. So if you get six hours of sleep like I do, and you feel like fantastic, but if I get eight hours, I feel tired all day, right? So that's not, you gotta do it for you. But if you take a nap during the day, probably not getting therapeutic amount of sleep. So you want therapeutic amount of sleep. So I disagree with him a little bit there. Exercise. Oh, there's your story. What? All right. I don't know anything about this exercise. From you. He says 30 to 60 minutes per day. Yeah. So roughly 30 minutes a day, five well, days a like, week, 150 minutes. That's like four commercials. I can't do that. But what's good about when you think about it as a daily thing, um, yeah. that's when you are establishing habit. So it's fine if you want to start small with like intentional exercise say yeah. you know you want to oh I can only do one day a week for intentional exercise but if you're just thinking about any kind of movement every day some kind of movement or activity every day that that should probably be just a recurring thought I bet grandpa spent burns about 400 calories looking for the road every day <laughs> <laughs> So then, uh, stress reduction, so yoga, meditation, music, mindfulness, but again, variety of things. But mindfulness and meditation rewire your brain. Like that's just hugely important. Yoga. So does gratitude practices. Does interrupting people? Does, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you a variety of things to work with so that you don't have the same neural pathway firing every time, every show. All right. <laughs> I'm interrupting you all the time though. Okay. <laughs> so, healthy carbs, so low glycemic nutrient dense, healthy blood sugar. So they said fasting 12 hours a day, which basically it's eat at 6, don't eat midnight Until snacks. Until morning, yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty easy. Like all this stuff is, is stupid easy stuff. Like this, that's what I love about like this idea of like reversing Alzheimer's or reversing dementia. Uh, yeah, it's simplicity. It's just if you put oil, gas, <laughs> antifreeze, um, tail light fluid in your car and you keep the battery charged, it's going to work. I have another thought. Ooh. Baby boomers. Boom. Could baby boomers also contribute to the 1990s increase? Also, baby boomers having been a sort of, mm. a kind of generation where you 
listen to what the doctor says, you take the medication that mm. the doctor tells you to take, right. and you eat what's convenient and what's out there and presented to you. That's right. Because so. the generation before that generation, they did their doctors did natural medicine. Did you know that? Yeah, no so kind of wondering if that hasn't contributed to the, that uprising it's as well. One. Don't, well, get your flu shot if you want some mercury that causes dementia, right? Uh, that's only 5% effective at best. Do you guys, do you guys promote the flu shot there? Um, we don't really talk a lot about it. Your flu shot should be exercise. <laughs> we, I think we would encourage that no so matter what. So these kind of books are awesome, but the reality is there's a huge amount of complexity there, but the simplicity is just back to very basic lifestyle, which is the same simplicity as this chart that we'll post, which is just Mediterranean diet, do what the healthiest, happiest, long living populations that don't have it. Do what we used to do before we had epidemics of Alzheimer's, right? What are you guys currently doing? How, you know, over the course of those of you who are regular show watchers, um, what kinds of things have you established in your lifestyle over the past year or so? I'm curious to know um, mm. the things that you've adopted and the ways that you've changed and the new habits that you've, that you've created that have become consistent for you. <clears throat> so my sister, who, or stepsister who's a nun, she has a new habit. Tim's wow. eating more ice cream. <laughs> Almond ice cream. <laughs> Did you get a new habit? Tim, well, good. Le we'll we'll look forward to not being able to have a complete conversation <laughs> with you in ten years. Oh, <laughs> she's talking smack, Tim. <laughs> talking smack. Uh, no. So there was a patient, one of my first patients in the geriatrics. He said, "Well, if I have to stop eating ice cream every day, I might as well shoot myself in the head." Like, the dude's blind from diabetes. <laughs> like, he's going to lose his toes. Like, really? Do like, you really want to lose your toes? Of course, if I was blind and about to lose my toes, I'd probably want to eat ice cream, too. <laughs> so, in all fairness, it's like, don't give the homeless guy money. He'll buy it's alcohol. It's hard because it's instant gratification, and it tastes good, and I'm not going to deny it. That's right. But if you want to feel good and not get to that point where you're like, oh, shit. I should have probably not eaten quite as much ice cream. <laughs> then you might want to think about moderating that. Yeah. So, um, Deb has a su another subject What's suggestion. That? What's that? Black mold. That I like is it. Racist. And I've had a couple of patients suffer from that. I like it. Black mold. So we should do black mold Texas tea. Speaking of that, we didn't talk about tea. Oh, she has some good stats. We'll end with her good stats. Tea. 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 I think, I think, wait, I think drinking tea, hot tea, lowers your risk of Alzheimer's by 86%. 86%. I bet that's because of theanine. They did right? a study of 950 adults, 55 and older, um, and it lowers your neurocognitive risk by 50 percent that's freaking huge drink did you just take a drink of tea yes <laughs> like a hot tea conveniently hottie hot tea so hottie tea yeah hottie tea blue pen look at this ice cream bandwagon happening <laughs> oh so she says amy says what type of tea and this is even better it didn't matter it didn't, a yeah, it didn't actually matter. Isn't that crazy? But we would still recommend green tea. Green tea. Green tea with nootropic medicine for cognitive function. Uh, the emphasis on theanine with the tiny amounts of caffeine, like about 25 milligrams, which is green tea. Well, if you think about it, if you're doing like a black tea that's really high in caffeine, you're going to be having some of that stress response. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, yeah. But they said it just needed to be made, it just needed to be tea from leaves. Leaves. Not yeah. from BT. Not, not, I don't know what else you would make tea from. Flowers, herbs. Flowers or herbs? Flowers. Herbs yeah. or leaves. Maybe root tea. Ginger tea. Ginger well, tea. Well, those down. are probably good teas. I think it's because of leaves because that's, it has chlorophyll in there, has um, theophylline, epigallic acid. I think that's why. Yeah. So, Deb says the what, what she's been working on. 
is just flat out not allowing other people's stress to make her stress. She's still working on it. What's what's the phrase? What's the Polish phrase? Polish phrase. Yeah. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Other people's problems are not your problem. So she's changed how she's how she's looking at it in a really massive way. And has stress gone down? Yes. Yeah. Um, and now she says her stress relief. If if I if I am understanding this correctly, she says now it's like watching TV instead of being sucked in. So she's she's you've developed your observer. You've developed your observer. Yeah. So you're. You can watch it. You can watch what's happening inside yourself. That's mindfulness there. Cool. That's perfect. Because you can just be like, oh, look at that crazy over there. Not my problem. <laughs> you not getting my hormones. So, yeah. good. Any last questions before we sign off? We've got fart shows coming up, mold shows coming up. I kind of want to talk about osteoporosis. Well, we should do that. What about moldy farts and weak bones? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Diversity. <laughs> All right, y'all. Oh. You have wasted another hour of <laughs> your, your life right. that you'll never get back. You were probably playing games on your phone while you were playing this. I think so. Or Are if you? you're like um, someone here, that you probably don't even watch the show unless you commented on something. I only watch the shows that I'm in. You're like, and if he doesn't say my name and say like, then oh, Holly's on the show, then I'm like, Psh, I'm out. That's how much I care about this. Let's have a show where Holly's not here and we'll just talk about Holly. I'm definitely going to watch that one. <laughs> no. All right, y'all. Love you guys. Thank you for uh, being here. And don't touch that button.